Greetings, everybody. Get out your King James Bible and turn to the first book of Kings, chapter 3. We're going to read verse 1. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. A little bit of background here. David, the king, had died, and Solomon, his son, was made king in his stead. And uh, so here it is. Solomon is uh, becoming king. And, uh, well, let's read the rest of the story. Verse 1. And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Now, it was a common thing back in the old days uh, that your neighbors, ruling kingdoms, your neighbors, you know, like Pharaoh, king of Egypt, uh, you'd marry your, off your daughter to the king next door because, you know, uh, they would be less likely to want to make war with you. I mean, after all, you're married to their daughter, you know, and she's going to be saying, oh, please don't attack my dad, you know. Let's work something out, you know. Uh, but the thing is, the Lord doesn't say, to my knowledge, the Lord doesn't say anything good about Egypt. To my knowledge, I can't find anything in the Bible that speaks good about Egypt. And uh, these are not the people that were in Joseph's day, and by no means. And not only that, uh, the Lord said, don't marry the women that are heathens because they'll turn your heart from me. And this is found in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and hast cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, uh, that's who Esau married, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Well, at least until Jesus comes, and then we got to preach unto them and tell them about the love of Jesus, Chaplain Bob. God loves them. I don't think so. Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. Oh, yeah. So, and just remember something. Solomon had like 300 and something wives and like 700 concubines, which is sort of kind of like a wife, but not really. Uh, I guess it's, you get to have fun with them without, I don't know. All I know is he had... Uh, if, if that was the Playboy Mansion, he's got a thousand playmates. Yeah. I mean, think about it. That's, and every one of them is, is vying for his, uh, attention. You know? Oh, I, I want to go serve my God, Lucifer. No, I want to go serve my God, the devil. I want to serve my God, Satan. Uh, Bell, Balaam or Baal, or whatever, you know, you got, you got a thousand of these pulling at you in every which way but loose, and that, they were, they were Solomon's downfall in a lot of ways, maybe not completely, but uh, he suffered for it, So, you know, a lot of guys think, oh, yeah, multiple wives, that's going to be a, that's a real fantasy there. I don't know. 
I, it sounds like a nightmare to me, but uh, of course, I didn't think like that when I was in my 20s, but uh, I do now. Verse 2. All right, so Solomon made an affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter. And then he brought her to Jerusalem, the city of David. And uh, he, you know, an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Verse 2. Only the people sacrificed in high places because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. Uh, probably because of his heathen wives. I don't know. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. Uh, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't the satanic heathen sacrifices at this time. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. Ah, here we go. The dream. Dreams and visions, right? That's what this series is about. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask, what shall I give thee? So, basically, God's saying, Hey, uh, what do you want? Ask, what I shall give thee? And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he has walked before thee in truth, and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or to come in. In other words, I don't know where I'm coming from or where I'm going. At least that's how I look at it. Verse 8. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. Ah, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. So God's going to give him, make him wise and give him wisdom. And I also have given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if, there's that if, there's that big if, I-F, and if thou wilt walk in my ways, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. You want to live for a long time? Healthy and strong? Yeah, keep the commandments. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings, and offered peace offerings, and made a feast to all his servants. Then came there two women, 
that were harlots. What's a harlot? A whore. That were harlots under the king and stood before him. Now, where are their husbands? Well, they're harlots. They're whores. They probably don't know who the father is. They don't have. They don't know who the daddy is. I've known quite a few of them. Then came there two women that were harlots under the king and stood before him. And the woman, woman said, O my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day that after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also, and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. In other words, she had the baby in the, the bed, and she, she laid on it, and it died, right? And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I arose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is, my, uh, is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. Then said the king, The one saith, this is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead. And the other said, Nay, but thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. So here it is. Both women are saying the living son is theirs. Verse 24, And this king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one and half to the other. Then spake the woman, whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son, and she said, O my lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. And the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. Smart move, huh? And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, and they saw the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. So the Lord gave Solomon a dream and asked him, Hey, what do you want? I want wisdom so that I can judge your people. And God gave, you know, in the days of Solomon, Silver wasn't even accounted valuable. It was like like pennies to Americans, you know, pennies. I mean, when I was a kid, you could get three Tootsie Rolls for a penny, but what's a penny by today? I don't I, I don't know. I don't know if anything costs a penny. Nothing. You three big Tootsie Rolls back in the day. Yeah, when I would go to the 7-Eleven and buy something and they gave us a, some pennies, that's what I would buy, Tootsie Rolls. Oh, well, them days is long gone. We used to have five and dime stores where you could buy junk made in Japan or Hong Kong, which was probably made in China. They just relabeled it Hong Kong, uh, where you could buy I junk items for five and ten cents. There are no five and dime stores anymore. But, uh, yeah. But silver was counted as nothing. People had gold. Silver was worth, pretty much considered worthless because they were so wealthy. All right, so that's the end of this Bible study. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb is slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.